Welcome to Film Daffodil, your favourite movie review. Well, we're in Advent leading up to Christmas, and so I feel I can safely introduce my new Christmas series looking at great Christmas movies, good and bad. Starting with, yeah, you guessed it, Home Alone. Chris Columbus's Home Alone was released in the UK cinemas on the 7th of December 1990. That's 30 years ago. This review is a tad late. You what the French call les incompetents. What? Thanks to Home Alone's ubiquity, it may be not known when Home Alone was originally released, it was a mahoosive hit. It was produced on a budget of 15 million and released on Thanksgiving Day and spent a staggering 12 weeks at number one and grossed more than 470 million at the box office. What else could we be forgetting? Our troubles will be ours. Kevin! Ah! Home Alone was written by John Hughes, who started as an author of humorous essays and stories for National Lampoon. He went on to produce and direct live-action comedies such as National Lampoon's Vacation in 1983 and its sequels, National Lampoon's European Vacation and my personal favourite, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. As an aside, this reminds me of my childhood misdeed, as my dad had it on VHS and I sold it at a cash and loan store when I was very young. Naughty! I have since bought him a replacement DVD every year since, as this was my dad's favourite Christmas movie. Oops. Well clear it is to the street. The movie, of course, stars the enigmatic Macaulay Culkin, who was about 10 years old at the time of filming. He shared the screen with Joe Pesci as Harry Lyme and the hilarious Daniel Stern as Marv Mudgins. And it's Elf. Get off my property. And of course, John Hurd as Peter McAllister, who is no longer with us, Catherine O'Hara as Kate McAllister. Also including a bar supporting cast, including Devin Retray as the psycho Buzz. Don't you know how to knock a phlegm wad? And one of my personal favourites, the guest appearance by the late John Candy as Gus Polanski. As with many families, I've probably watched Home Alone as many times as the years gone by since it was made, and as many around the world who have come to see Home Alone as ubiquitous with Christmas preparation and family entertainment. This movie is hilarious pretty much throughout the entire movie from start to finish. A Christmas masterpiece of comedy. Kevin gets left behind in the house after being blamed for ruining the family pizza the night before their flight to Paris. Look what you did, you little jerk. Don't worry about your home. It's in good hands. Kevin is sent to the attic where he wishes his family would just disappear. In this house, you're the only one who has to make trouble. Get upstairs. Everyone in this family hates me. I hope I never see any jerks again. However, in the middle of the night, there was an electrical storm, which meant that all the alarms didn't get off, and all the McAllisters got up late and had to rush to the airport. And in the chaos of getting to the airport, they completely and utterly forget Kevin. And little did they know that their house and belongings were being eyed up by the local thieves, Harry and Mark. My favourite scenes are definitely with Joe Pesci and Daniel Stern as the ridiculous criminals who stake out the McAllister home, not knowing that a 10-year-old boy with a MacGyver-esque ability to fashion weapons and traps out of everyday household items lays way to hand them their backsides again and again with explosions and hilarity throughout. It's brilliant. My house. I have to defend it. Get out! This film has been seen again and again throughout Christmas and is a family favourite. It is quintessentially a 1990s classic movie and could be considered a perfect Christmas comedy. But sadly, this isn't the review of probably the best Christmas movie ever made. No. No, this is a review of Home Sweet Home Alone 2021. Premiered on Disney Plus on November 12, 2021 and is advertised as a reboot of the classic 1990s Home Alone with Macaulay Culkin. Directed by Dan Mazer, whose previous endeavours as a producer and partner of Sasha Baron Cohen and worked on Ali G, Borat and Bruno. Nice and co-written by Streeter Sedal and Mikey Day, who joined Saturday Night Live in the 39th season as a writer and eventually became a feature in the 42nd season. The film stars Elizabeth Claire Kemper as Pam McKenzie, Rob Delaney as Jeff McKenzie, Archie Yates as Max Mercer and Aileen B as Carol Mercer. Devin Retray reprises his role as Buzz McAllister, also featuring Peter Holmes as Uncle Blake. <sighs> <clears throat> 
So, what can be said about this movie? Well, reportedly, Chris Columbus, the director of the first two Home Alone movies, has been one of the first to condemn the remake, stating it's a waste of time as far as he was concerned. This seems to be a Hollywood trend lately, remaking classics that just don't need to be made. What, to make more money? Anyway, it's about being fair, so let's have a look at this disaster. Pam and Jeff having to list their house for sale when Jeff loses his job. They are left no choice but to open up their home to potential buyers. Jeff encounters Max and his mother Carol when Max needed to use the bathroom. Carol sees that they have a very expensive doll that she said could be worth a lot of money. Later, Jeff looks at eBay and finds that the doll listed could be worth up to $200,000, but thinks that Max has stolen it. Pam and Jeff McKenzie then plan to try to steal back their valuable family heirloom. Meanwhile, Max Mercer has been left behind while his family is in Japan for the Christmas holidays. Max, while alone, gets the wrong end of the stick and thinks that Pam and Jeff intend to kidnap him, and so predictably, as Macaulay Culkin did, he uses his mischievous resourcefulness to dumbfound the bandits and trap them in a series of mishaps and gags throughout. This movie kind of reminds me of the children's ITV TV series of the 1990s, where the adults are just as over top as the children. Claire Kemper, who is known for Bridesmaids 2011, 21 Jump Street 2012, the Lego Batman movie 2017, even including The Simpsons in 2020, she has some pedigree. However, in this, I just didn't find her funny at all. None of the gags land. They seem forced and expected, almost formulaic, footprints of its predecessors. Unlike the web bandits who are definitely the villains and that is where the humour is extracted, I think the movie is trying to make us root for both Max, Pam and Jeff. It's confusing and it doesn't make the story compelling or dramatic. Rob Delaney, who is hilarious as a stand-up comic and had a cameo in Deadpool 2, which was hilarious as the non-powered X-Force man, in this has provided some laughs. However, I don't think that I laughed until about halfway through the film. Carol Mercer has gone to Japan and realises that Max has been left back in the US and starts to head back. There's a scene on the plane where a strange man looks at her screen and I think this was meant to be a funny yet awkward moment but once again it just came over as flat and didn't in any way convey her angst as being thousands of miles away from Max and it seemed completely out of place. Carol Mercer's character is supposed to retread the comedic tension that Catherine O'Hara sublimely balanced in Home Alone 1 and Home Alone 2. Eventually however you forget that Carol is on her way back and it became virtually irrelevant until the end of the movie. I can't help but feel that every comedic joke within this movie is so stretched to the limit all the time and it's impossible to take a breath. I found it very hard to laugh at all the jokes, some of which I felt were probably not suitable for the audiences as Max delves into a mountain of sweets that is meant to send up Scarface. Any adult watching that and knowing where that film reference came from would probably wince. And also, why would you want your child to have so much sugar? Again, I struggle to find a reason for this movie to have been made. Home Alone, the original is going to be watched by millions around the West Western world and still find new audiences and stand up over a period of 30 years. I don't think that this movie is going to be remembered in two years. It didn't need to be made. And it's not as good, nor does it improve on anything the original had already done far better. Every time I see Daniel Stern say the immutable words, that sounds exactly like a toolbox falling down the stairs or pulled on that rope knowing that there is going to be a trap or explosion is so excellently done and still makes me belly laugh each time I see it. That was the sound of a tool chest falling down the stairs. <laughs> this remake, Home Sweet Home, is on its own and doesn't have a scratch on the original. So my suggestion is, don't bother with it this Christmas. Sit down with your family, stick to Home Alone 1 and 2, and let the originals continue to entertain. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and I will place a link to my last review, Bond is Dead, just here. Until then, see you next week. I made my family disappear. Yeah!